changing it up. So normally we have um, noon time demos and such at this hour, but I think that instead of watching the pros fly so much, perhaps the pros can share some of their knowledge. So here I've got one of the best pilots on the planet with us today, Mr. Kyle Dahl, here from the California, Utah area. Um, and so Kyle's going to go over some LiDAR list controller um, testing, tweaking, doing, any tests. These are going to be pretty quick, maybe like 50 minutes. Um, and we'll just see how, how things go. So Kyle is in slight jig mode. So you just tell me if I need to hold the mic for you or anything. Uh, this is all you do. So just let us know if we can help with anything. So Kyle's going to be flying his Mikado Kaloga 690. This is an aircraft that he developed himself. This is very cool, so I don't besides Nitro. Um, and he's using the Mikado d bar control here, but this, uh, what we're talking about with kind of work with anything. It can kind of work with like any flight controller out there, these things. So I'll take it on. Alright, so I think I'm just going to kind of focus on some of the basics, uh, showing you guys more so what too high a gain looks, what looks like, what too low a gain looks like, for the cyclic and the, for the, uh, for the tail, and then we'll kind of go from there. I might get into a few specific G-bar values, um, just so that I have a lot of people ask me questions about what certain values do in everything. So then to start, I'll just, uh, so any, with uh, any modern flywire system, like with the VBAR, for example, if you load a preset value, so we have presets for a 600, 700 size, 800, or smaller, obviously, those values are going to get you pretty close. And then if you want to fine tune off that, we'll, we'll get into that there. So everything that you get out of the box should be pretty close, to be honest. Um, I know we've taken a lot of time to try and perfect those presets and get you pretty close in the ballpark. But I think to start, I'll get uh, probably to start my heavy. Of course. And then uh, I'll show you guys what like too high a cycle game looks like, and then we'll go from there. Maybe talk about the break too. What the game does is it affects the stomping, the start and the stop behavior of the model. So characteristically, if the game is too high, you're going to see like a bounce back. So I do pretty much three tests uh, to check my game. The first one is from in a hover. I'll kind of jab the cyclic stick. That's all I'll demonstrate. And you'll see the model either stop really good or it'll kind of stop and bounce. So I'm going to go into my model and I'm going to raise the game about 20 points from where I'm at. So with this model I'm at 70 normally. I'm going to go up to 90. And then uh, I'll show you what that'll kind of look like. I'm going to hover it, give some quick cyclic jabs, and then you'll see, hopefully we'll see a little bounce back. And then For everyone out there, this unit of measurement between where the engine stall and where the starter is, is called one helimeter. If anyone's curious. So this distance here is one helimeter. <laughs> if, if your game is too high and you're in fast forward flight, on the top of the loop, it'll kind of oscillate. So, so that is the second test that I'll do, so I'll demonstrate that now. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, so, so what he's showing is he's just showing faster and slower because he's showing different characters. So now I'm going to lower my gain back down to where I normally run, which is 70, and then I'll do those two tests again, and uh, we'll see if you guys can see the difference. I'm probably was a little worried to use the tear pads because it has plastic kind of the stop and start, mostly the stop behavior of the model on cyclic. So if you have a running VTX blades, for example, which are really an authoritative blade, if you do your stop, like you go to do a quarter roll and the model has a pretty distinct bounce back, lower your optimizer value down like five or six points and that will help take down that, that kind of bounce back. So if you have a, a, an authoritative blade, like GTX or some of the others, uh, 
you can pay attention to your optimizer value. Those are pretty much all that I adjust uh, in a basic setup, is your flip weight, your gains, um, and then those, those optimizer values. And I think <laughs> that's a great idea. Does anyone have any other questions that pertain to like live wireless setup and tuning? Yes, sir. So the, the question for those who didn't hear was how do you differentiate between overall gain and the, the stop behavior with overall gain and the stop behavior between optimizer? Um, overall gain is more when you do big stick inputs. So like when I'm doing those jabs, uh, for the collective or for the cyclic, that's I'm using like full pitch, like full stick. So if you're using all the stick and then you stop, that's your overall game stopping behavior. Optimizer is more the off center feel. So like if you do, like a, uh, you only move the stick, let's say half the travel or less, that's more your optimizer. So little inputs, like if you want to do like a little cyclic jab or a little quarter roll. That's optimizer, but if you're doing full stick input jabs, that's overall. Does that make sense? Uh, in the V-bar, the question is, should you run the optimizer? Because in V-bar, we have an automatic optimizer adjuster. Um, you should not run it all the time. Uh, you can turn it on, and then the system will kind of look at everything and automatically adjust it. But that's you're only supposed to do that for one or two flights and then turn it off. So you don't want to leave your optimizer on all the time, just, just for one or two flights, to let the system kind of uh, change it itself. Yep. And then uh, for tail setup, uh, it's kind of the same stuff. It's a lot easier to see tail gain. The way I set tail gain is uh, basically, you, you can set it with stops, throw stops, or sideways flying. So I basically lower the gain, and then I'll slowly raise it up until in sideways flight or in stops, I don't have any big uh, wags. And I think everybody gets that pretty much. Um, that's about it for, for tail. I mean, it's really easy. Um, that's perfect. That's perfect. I'm trying to think of anything else that I want to say. Governor settings. Governor, Governor settings. settings. We'll do that with nitro. That's a that's a nitro <laughs> thing. <laughs> um, but I will say actually, with with uh, V bar governor for electrics primarily. Let me shut this off. With uh, electric governor settings, if you're going to be running lower RPM, there are a number of adjustable parameters in the V bar. For example, there's ones for collective add and cyclic add. Now what those do is they basically, it's a pre-compensation. So as soon as you give cyclic, or, or collective or cyclic, the system will automatically give a collective pitch. Or, sorry, forgive me. The system will give throttle percentage. So if you're hovering at 60% throttle and you give collective, it automatically will raise it to 70 or 75 just to, to help the system along. If you're doing low RPM, you need that less. So I think the stock values for electric governor are about, I think, 30, 30 or so on the collective. If you're doing low RPM, it's really easy for the governor to, to govern everything. So you can almost take those values down if you want. So those pre-comp values, it's called collective add and cyclic add. If you're doing, I mean, anything below 1800 RPM, I would say, you really don't even need those, in my professional opinion. So some people come to me and they say my model's kind of over-revving, or they'll say they have a tail kick. And a lot of the time, that's not a tail setting. It's just the governor is over-ramping everything, actually. So if you take those collective adds down, it can really help with your, your having a consistent governor uh, setting. By like governor gain and everything like that, the, the stock preset values are really good. So you shouldn't really need to mess with that too much. Cool. All right, let's hand it off for Kyle Dahl here. Let's give it up for Kyle.
Oh, thanks, thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. If you have any more specific questions, our booth, Makata USA booth, is right over here. So if you have any other uh, more specific questions, just come up and ask. Um, yeah. So. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks. Thank you guys for joining in on our first little seminar here. We'll do another one later on in the day. Uh, we got one for nitro tuning and one for auto rotations coming up. And if you want Kyle to do any maneuver at all, just ask him. He can do everything. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr.